All right. Welcome, everybody. Happy to be here. I hope you can all hear me well and see me well. Welcome to the Venture Briefing at uh, Still uh, today. We are very happy to be part of this organization. And a big thank you to uh, the Still for having us. I am. Uh, I have the pleasure to be today with a couple of speakers. I'm just gonna pass to the next slide. Uh, we'll be presenting uh, with a partner from the APFL, Margot Pages. Margot, thanks for being here. Hi everyone. Thank you, Julia. And uh, myself, so I'm Julia Bori. I'm working for VentureLab, a company that is supporting entrepreneurs uh, all around Switzerland. And I have the pleasure to host the Venture Briefings event all around Switzerland and universities in order to discuss entrepreneurship with advanced and experienced entrepreneurs. Talking about them, uh, we have two today. We have, oops, sorry, going too fast. Uh, we have Adriano Garona, CTO of Ebamed, uh, and Nicolas Ablé, CEO of uh, Mirex. Uh, Adriano, welcome. Hello, very nice to be here. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. And Nicola is still backstage. Our uh, team is trying to get him in. I'm sure this will work and uh, he will be there in a minute. The agenda of the day, I'm trying not to go too fast because I know that a lot of people tend to have like a couple of minutes delay. So I'm just going to give it maybe a few seconds for everyone to join in. Um, Exactly, maybe saying a few more words um, about what we're here for, and I will do that in a minute. Um, okay, so maybe I'll look at the agenda. We're going to start with a few words of welcoming and talking about support mechanism. A lot of you today are interested into building startups. For that, you need funding, you need support, you need coaching. So we'll talk about that, like what are the options that you have as a student at the APFL, as a researcher. If you're already out of the APFL, uh, we'll talk about all these options. Then we'll give the word uh, to Nicolas Ablis, of Mirex, who will tell us uh, about his ventures and he is a serial entrepreneur and will tell us how he raised the first 100k and then the first millions and now uh, he's not at his first startup so a lot of learnings to share. We'll take some time for Q&A. I will invite you all to use the chat. Uh, so there is a chat option on the right. Don't hesitate to ask questions. There are no stupid questions so just like yeah use, uh, use the opportunity. It's not every day we have the precious time of, uh, of company founders. Uh, then we'll go on to uh, Adriano Garona, CEO of Ebamed. He will also tell us about his journey, his advice uh, on how to raise your first funds. Uh, and then we'll do questions and a closing, of course. The objectives of today, of course, is to understand what are the different support programs around here. Uh, so mainly now we can use the fact that everything is online. So some of the programs that you usually cannot get uh, that are maybe based somewhere else, uh, you can you can get access to. But we're probably going to talk mainly about the local uh, local supports here. The idea is also you get inspired. I think those success stories, Mirax, Ebamed are, are fantastic stories of uh, APFL alumni launching companies, growing uh, and, and, uh, and now living out of it. And this is, I think, quite inspiring. And the idea is that we talk about how to get the first 100K. Those are very difficult uh, to do at the beginning when you don't have the trust of investors. So we'll tackle that. To start with, I'm going to show you a few of the programs that might be of interest to you. And they are all supported by the Gabatru Foundation. Uh, this is a philanthropic initiative that is supporting with um, 5.5 million when it comes to Venture Kick, but way more with other programs uh, supporting innovation all around Switzerland. A first of their program that you might know, and actually I have an old, <laughs> an old banner at my back, so it's actually even more. It used to be 5 million and, uh, and now it's 5.5 million, so it's growing uh, every year, the money that is invested in startups through Venture Kick. But uh, the idea of Venture Kick is that on top of getting access to potentially 150,000 uh, for your startup, you also get access to a whole uh, group of potential future investors uh, or interesting contacts. So it's a huge network of people that can help you build your company uh, and some coaching. I'm going to tell you the exact structure of this program. It works in three stages. So you are in it like an accelerator for around nine months. 
with the first stage, which is 10,000 um, as a grant, uh, followed if you manage to go through the second and third stage uh, with 40,000 in convertible loan and 100,000 uh, in convertible loan for the last stage. In between these, just going to break for a second and say hello to Nicola Ablé, who managed to join us. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> hello Nicola. Good to see you. Um, as I was saying, we have uh, it, once you manage to get the three kick, uh, you are uh, going with 150,000 that you can invest in building your company. In between the stages, you get what we call Kickers Camp. Uh, these are full days of training with Jordi Montserrat uh, and some other founders of Venture Lab, where you will get to ask yourself a lot of questions uh, and you will be kicked in in some ways with. The idea is that uh, you have a solid base after that and you know uh, your business plan is, is uh, uh, better structured than when you got in. Uh, as soon as you pass the first stage of Venture Kick, you get access to Inno Booster. An Inno Booster is an extra kick of 150,000. Uh, extremely worth applying for and um, again, uh, yeah. Easy, easy money to access, I think. So this was for Venture Kick, uh, and now First Ventures, another initiative by the foundation, uh, Gabor Truff. Uh, you can, the idea is to support every student that are in, uh, University of Applied Science. So maybe some, most of you here are maybe more, uh, in, uh, APFL for, but for anyone joining us from an Applied Science, you have access to up to 150,000 in funding, depending on the case. So here you go, you pitch in front of a jury and, uh, if you manage to convince them, they will define if you need uh, 80,000, 100,000, 120. What I've seen is that most of the time everyone gets the 150,000. Uh, so definitely worth going and, and argue why you need uh, that amount. The next intake is uh, May 31st. So definitely a right moment now to prepare a good application form and send it right away. Uh, it works quite straightforward. You have a project idea, they give you a first feedback, so you don't do the whole process for nothing. Once uh, they give you a yes, a first yes for the project idea, you do an online application. Once that one uh, is also, has also passed, you are invited to pitch in front of a jury. Again, way more than just money, it's a network, it's visibility. Uh, as uh, Adriano and uh, Nicola will tell in a minute, uh, Venture Kick or these programs are usually um, more than just the money. Or at least I hope that it was the case for, for you guys. <laughs> um, I, uh, before law, starting to talk with uh, our two entrepreneurs, I would love to give my, the word to Margot to talk about uh, the APFL and their new program, because it's brand new that uh, that you guys are uh, having some, having Blaze, at least that's new, and Changemakers is not that old either. So Margot, thanks for being here. Thank you, Julia, and thanks everyone for attending today. I'm going to give you a few words on all the programs which are available uh, at EPFL for student entrepreneurs, going through the idea stage, up to market launch and deployment. The first one is obviously change makers. If you have an idea and you want to build a startup, you're motivated, you want to change the world, come to the program. We will love to support and teach you how to take your idea back to building a startup. Also, if you're looking for making a master thesis and you want to do a PDM, you can do it right into your startup project. This is called a startup PDM or startup uh, project, you can simply reach back to me after the call and I'll be happy to guide you through this. You can also check on the website and you will have all the information about the startup in PDM. And the last program, and it's the one that I'm going to present today, is the Accelerator. It's called Blaze. We launched the first cohort in March today. Um, so it's really about supporting your market launch and making sure that you get to meet a lot of the network out there and launch a startup successfully. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Margot. Sounds really cool. Looking forward to see who comes out of uh, Blaze and, uh, and yeah, hopefully then join some of the other programs that uh, we can offer uh, at Venture Lab. I'm going to pass now to the next slide and uh, next slide being introducing our speaker. So first speaker will be Nicolas Ablé. Nicolas, uh, we're going to do a quick check if we can share screens. Uh, if you can share your screen, which um, should work, can you give it a try or maybe I should stop first? 
Yes. Here we go. Okay, you should see it now. Yes, works perfectly. Thanks a lot. So, Nicolas Ablé, founder of Mirex, and uh, also founder of, uh, oh my God, that was the company that you sold to Intel, was called uh, Limoptics. Yeah, right. Uh, so in my head, I always think of you as a serial entrepreneur and someone that has that in his blood. Um, it's a pleasure to have you today and, and thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hello, everybody. So uh, just to give you a brief uh, background for my side, I mean, just, it's, it's a busy one here, but uh, I've got an engineering background. I did a PhD at the, at the PFL. Um, then indeed, I've been I started different companies. The first one, Lemoptic, that we sold to, to, to Intel. I'm going to tell you a bit of a journey there. Uh, then another one in, in a green tech was Osmo Blue, a uh, green tech domain. And then, but that was a bit in parallel. The main one was really Lemoptic that we then uh, we joined Intel doing uh, information uh, AR displays. And then joining Magic Leap as another company. And recently, like two years ago, creating Mirex. Um, so really, my passion there is, is really building businesses, building tech products, uh, IP as well, really from scratch, uh, from ideas to, to industrialize to find the money, to build the team and to grow it and to put it to the market. That's what I like, really. But I also like, uh, um, I mean, a startup as, as a founder, but also as an investor. So I, do, I really have the two sides. I'm, I'm funding my own companies, uh, but I'm investing in a number of those. and, and in total, I've got a really good idea and on the investment round, where you start finding the right, the first, uh, the first money for your company. And what is a good time to go to investors and what kind of investors? In general, I'm really focused on, on, on high tech and, and clean tech centers. Uh, so I, at the end, if you look back, I did like six startup experience, uh, two success, one failure, one that I left and one is ongoing. Uh, a bit in the US, a bit in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in here. So my really first big venture was, was Lemoptics. So a really spin off from the EPFL. We started with nothing. I had no experience. I just had my fresh PhD and, um, and we wanted to do something with, uh, with a friend of mine. And, and it took us basically a year. Uh, and we, we, during that year, we started to take a lot of support from uh, the environment that includes Venture Lab, which was just, uh, you know, it was Venture Lab since 10 years. So it was in 2007. So I did all the entrepreneurship uh, courses there. Uh, that enabled me to find one of the later and co founder of the company, and, but also create really a network of all the entrepreneurs that you can help each other, you can learn from each other. And then we really built a company. We did different several rounds of investment. Uh, uh, we raised in total like five million. So initially, the first round was really from uh, from uh, business angels, and, and eventually the entire Lemoptics round was with business angel. We never had any any VC, so uh, professional investor in terms of uh, it's not their own money, but really business angel where it was all own money invested in in, uh, in Lemoptics, and we sold it indeed to to Intel. Um, so I had mentioned before, in, in parallel, a bit, uh, some years later, started uh, Osmo Blue uh, with a friend of mine. We never raised any fund, any equity fund, but we took a lot of a support fund. So there's a lot of uh, um, uh, grants you can get. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, like from in this case, was from the Open, uh, from the, because it was a green tech uh, system. Um, but also from, in this case, we took it from, from Spain as well, from different places on a specific topic. You, when you dig a bit, there's always an ecosystem around. And this is where you can find, uh, public funding and free money, which is obviously the best one for, for, for the company after the money from the customer, which is even the better one. Uh, but once you don't have, since until you don't have a product, you can't really sell anything. Um, then I joined you know, Intel. It was kind of a, a startup in itself, but super high funding. I joined Magic Leap and recently uh, created Mirax. So Mirax, we already we started in 2019. Uh, indeed, it was easier to raise a, a pre-seed round because most of the investors that came were from Lemoptics investor, really happy about Lemoptics exit. Uh, it doesn't mean that they invested with uh, uh, blank eyes. They really check in detail, 
but it was much faster to raise the round. So it is true that the first time is always the hardest one. That's pure. Um, and, and right now we're just closing a, a round with uh, with venture capital uh, VCs uh, for the seed round. But also I've, I'm investing in startup. Uh, um, so a different startup, some uh, are successful, some are, were not so successful. A lot of them are still ongoing. Um, and I just want to tell you because I, I see really both sides. So, I mean, what is expected from the investor side and, and what do you need to push from the founder side? We need to get a good match because at the end, no investor, they need, they want to invest, but they have either they don't know that you even exist or, uh, they, there's too many options. And so they need to be like a most of a personal feed there. And this one is, is, is indeed a personal feed that I met some people around that I like the project and like the team. And I wanted to, to help them and to invest, not only to help, huh? but as investor, you expect a return on investment as well, but really on something that you like. So it's really matching. That's what I want to say it is proposing something and finding the right match, uh, in terms of funding, but in terms of, uh, philosophy as well with, uh, with investor in case it's, a, it's a business angel investors. Um, and so really use all available supports. I mean, we took it, we took everything, uh, as part of, uh, Lemoptics, but also as part of, uh, Osmo Blue and Amirax. Reuse really full supports along the way that you can find here. It's really nice ecosystem around here. We started with initial grant, which is the inner grant that's specific to EPFL. Um, I could say now that without inner grant, I'm not sure I would have done Lemoptics, uh, because that gives you a bit of a security. It's a big push, but somehow it's a security when you're you know, young, you don't really have any money. Um, and then all the entrepreneurship trainings. I mean, we did inner Swiss, uh, training, venture lab training. We see the kicker camp. Uh, we did venture kick. Uh, um, Swiss coaching as well, uh, that give you really free, enfin, free money in a sense that, uh, uh package money to, uh, work on specific focus area could be a marketing area, could be business, could be an IP area, could be a tech area. And then doing a lot of startup competitions. I mean, in a startup competition, you have a lot of around this. And there's also a strong boost from Inno Booster. There is accelerator program. And for example, as part of Mirax, we are part of the uh, European Space Agency business incubation that opens a lot of doors on, on the business side. And, and really think that at the end, especially in the startup competition, the jury members are effectively investors. I mean, it's a small ecosystem. People know a lot of uh, uh, each other. And, uh, and either they are investors or they are professional across the field so they can be advising and helping. Uh, there. So really there's a lot of things. There's a lot of good information out there. And Venture Lab is, is really well concentrating everything, uh, in terms of knowledge and, uh, and, um, and use it, use it at max. I mean, Canton de Vaux, you can have also a hundred K, uh, as, uh, as, as a support, uh, fit foundation. It depends also on, on the stage of your company, but it's, it's, it's really the money that you want to take and the support like AMD startup competition as well, because they give you visibility. And once you have visibility, it's much simpler to raise funds, much simpler. And so there's really two things is, is to, to, to raise funds, especially the early fund, create visibility and think big. I mean, the first thing investor will look and say, okay, what, what's the, what's the market potential? What's the business potential? Can it grow a billion dollar company? Or, or, or is it a really tiny niche where the maximum revenue of the company will be, you know, hundred thousand a year? That's a totally different, uh, totally different ballpark figure. So it's as much effort to make a big company than a small company. And, uh, and so we really choose something that could become big and that's then much simpler to raise funds afterwards. And, and really, if you took the, the two side, uh, um, as a funder, I mean, when we do, when I do uh, fundraising, so it's really a bit more for, uh, for after the public, uh, public funding that you can get and the grants you can get. It's really, you need to build a story. I mean, from the regime where you started, et cetera, and where you want to be in the next five years, what would be the milestone to reach and which of those milestones creates value. And that's key. That's what people want to hear, uh, because it's create direction, it creates visibility, it creates a clear uh, target and there's no rocket science here. I mean, for example, when you start a clear first milestone is to get a product or to get the first customer. 
that evaluated. And that's, and we know that uh, asking for the right money to reach this milestone is really key because that's, that is a step, that would be a step in valuation that will be something that investor will expect to see and, and expect to, to have. So it's really build a story, get market traction. So get any, any money from the customer. It shows a, a commitment and that's key. Uh, put the team up front because at the beginning that's mainly the team. Huh? And you need to find a lead, a lead in terms of, sense uh, of, of a lean investor, somebody really believing you as part of the, you know, uh, the ecosystem. It uh, could be a business angel, could be uh, another kind of investor, somebody we can gather around him uh, and other people to co-invest with him. It's really finding a lead is key uh, for investment, but it's also key when you go to, to see a customer, having, having a, a, a leader uh, within the customer that will push you in, it's, uh, it's key. And the last point is, is, is important here. Until money is in a bank, nothing is firm. Uh, I'll tell you the story of, of Lemoptics. We were about to sign the first, first fundraising. It took us like a year uh, because we didn't know any investor at that time. And so we took a lot of time to build up. And then the day before, the guy called us. He said, oh, sorry, we don't invest anymore. And so that was a bit of a shock. Uh, and, and we had to come back and to argument and to renegotiate the valuation and eventually it, it was done. So it's, it's very important to go to the end and not believe it's too easy. It's really about convincing. At the beginning, it's convincing you can do it uh, because it's really about the trust between the investor and, and yourself. And it's a win-win between investor and startup because, for example, I want to invest in more startup, but I don't have time to meet them. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I hear about those startup by some other friend who invest in those startup, mostly, uh, really. Uh, but it's a, it's a win-win. Uh, people want to invest, and so you need to be to be visible in order to to have visibility for this. And the last thing here, I don't know why I'm with my time. Um, it's, I mean, as a business angel. You know, I need to like the team. I need to like the products. I need to see a bit of market traction, the size of the opportunity, the unique selling point, the, the, the key competition. And that's, that's really what you learn uh, doing a venture lab course <laughs> uh, in practice or you build it. And also personally is where I bring value. And most of the business angel is like this. So, um, so I, where I can be active. So what is my background? Uh, I would never invest, for example, in biotech. I don't know anything in biotech, uh, even though I could like it, but it's, it's not my stuff. So I will invest in some aspect and a lot of business angels will invest in some aspect that they like. Uh, uh, so for me, it has to be tech. It has to be where I can help on a customer network, through the world, through different industries, through the investor network, and through the, the IP side, because that's a personal thing I like IP. Uh, I also typically advise company or invest or both in, in, in startup, not in too many, but in, in, in the one I really see a good fit. Um, and this is very important. The last next point is that it's maybe for a little stage, but I will never invest in startup that tell me, you know, I need 50 million afterwards because it's outside of my range by far, <laughs> to be clear. Uh, so, uh, and so that will mean that all the kind of investor will have to come afterwards. And those kind of investors will ask for very tough uh, 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 contractual engagement in case things go wrong, etc. And something that as, as an investor, we can really be screwed up uh, against other investors. And so that I would typically never, never do it. Um, and valuation is important. I mean, is, is, what is the value of the company right now? How much share I can get for, my, for the company for my money? And what is the target valuation? What is the target exit price uh, for uh, for this company that I could believe in? Uh, at, the, at the beginning, it's really believe. Huh? Believe that the team can do it, and believe there's a market, and believe that I can get a nice return on investment. Still having fun, having fun because I help them, because I like the team, and there's a good atmosphere. And the last point is uh, I I need a tech component, but that's just just for me. So. That's it for my side. I hope uh, I give you a bit of a, of a color of uh, of what is my experience in terms of um, investment and and finding money, including my Thanks. first. Uh, yes, thanks a lot, Nicola. It's actually nice to have the both uh, sides. It's pretty rare to have already experience in investing as well as 
in uh, yeah. fundraising. And maybe my questions here, because we have a lot of we have students at least in the in the room and and the idea is to help them with kind of these first moves and uh, my question maybe would be how did you know you were for example um ready to apply for something like innocent or venture kick or uh, these things what did you have in, in hand because probably you didn't have a full fully working prototype you may, maybe you had more than just an idea so what was it you had back then No, uh, we had a we 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 had an idea, a small prototype, but very 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 light one, a very very light one. But we had, I mean, really, we had a something in hand, like a, a and before this, I was working like one year in 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 a big company, and I was my job was kind of narrow, narrow to something. I say, I mean, why do I risk if creating a startup? Basically, nothing. I mean, worst case, I come back to this company. If they accept me, but but I will learn so much. I will have so much more fun, and that was kind of not the trigger, but that was a, a no-brainer for me to to take the risks there, uh, to start the company. And um, but on a, on a, yeah, on on a, on a, when we started, we really had not a lot, and and there was a, also a nice push from the from the professor in the uh, the PFL from the lab saying, you know, guys. I feel there is something to do. We also saw our competitor in the US. We we uh, had just run, uh, um, uh, found, uh, got like few hundred million in investment, and we're doing a product and pushing for the market. We say, okay, let's let's do like what the competitor is doing, but let's do it better. Uh, and because we have a different technology approach, and this is at the end what we did. So it's. Yeah, we don't need to have a lot uh, to go there. You need to be convincing that you can deliver at some point. Uh, but I think what what people like in Lemoptics is that our investor, at least, is that we always delivered on what we say. Even when it was a small milestone, we always delivered. That's impressive. Uh, actually, a nice track record you can, I guess, bring into your next ventures uh, as well. So I don't see many. Uh, questions in the chat there was one earlier that was uh, for margot and she answered that already um maybe what i had in mind um still was um was the maybe one last question would be your advice to someone now that would come up to the venture kick jury because i think most people here would more be interested in, in joining venture kick um What would be your advice? What do they want to hear? So it's usually a 20 people sitting in front of you. And what did you feel was the element that would make them give you the kick? No, I think it was with, uh, I mean, the, 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 the market potential, the team together, the innovation and, um, and the fact that we can, you know, a bit of a competition analysis, but, but seeing, okay, Even though this is a busy field, uh, they can do it. We believe in them. I mean, we need to be convincing. At the end, it's, it's, it's a human uh, human factor with with some real number behind. Huh? You need to build your your, your business case, uh, your numbering. But and the most convincing thing is is to show that there is already market traction. So anything that can show, okay, this this company is already interested in, in what we do, even just by email, etc. I think it's a convincing because that's the fir first people, who, the first thing people ask in the jury is that, is, is, is there really a market? No, I mean, do you, or is it your dream that there is a market? Yes, you see, you need to be convincing in, in that aspect. Thanks, that's a... That's a good reminder for all our techies out there that usually focus on technology before before realizing that the market is also a very interesting uh, priority. I see a question from from Xavier in the chat. So how long do you expect to stay in a business venture? 10 years or shorter? Uh, no, in Lemoptics, it was uh, seven years. At the end, we had two choices, either, either to sell the company because we are really a technology company, as an IP company, sell the company uh, as a potential that we could do and we had demonstrated to go in the automotive market, into the consumer market, into the AR market, but not yet went there. So we had prototype of all of these things, a uh, very convincing one. Or we say, or we, we still keep five years from now 
and we build revenue and we sell as a revenue company. So either selling as a potential company or as a revenue company. And after seven years, we, we wanted to, to change, to make a new, a new history, a new, a new path. And for us, the path was to be acquired and to join the, the acquire company, which was Intel. So it's personal. I mean, I have, I have some friend here who started the adventure 14 years ago or 15 years ago, uh, still growing it and maybe they do IPO at some point. Um, but personally, uh, after some time, um, no, I want to, to see a bit of dynamics, uh, just as a, the organic growth, uh, is not so much fun for me. So you would just, so if we, if we answer the, so you would always expect it to last less than 10 years, like maybe ideally well, se seven years. Was that the ideal for you? Or maybe at five years, if you had the opportunity, you would have liked to stop by already by then. Well, it depends where you start, huh? Because where we started, we had really nothing and we grow it and, and the growth is nice. Uh, growth in terms of, of interest from the market, in terms of, you know, when you see, when you pitch to Apple, they, they are like super excited, etc. That's super nice. Um, but if you, if after two years, you, you start, start selling more and more and just really organic growth, that could be really good for, I mean, really interesting on some aspects. But it's personally, it's not what I'm looking for. So it depends when you start. If you start with a, with a product already there and really you want to increase uh, the revenue, or if you start with basically nothing and, 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 and build the tech and build your product, and that takes you seven years to build your product. Uh, so I mean, I don't, I don't think in advance this way. That makes sense. Uh, we have a, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Xavier, for the questions. And we have another one from André. Uh, which startups would you have uh, better chances to succeed in, in Switzerland, B2B or B2C? In your opinion, yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good question. In uh, boy, in uh, in hardware, because I'm more from a hardware side than pure software, I would say B two B because uh, I mean business is there's probably more margin uh, there, uh, but but in, in software maybe uh, more, I don't know, maybe maybe fifty fifty. Um, but typically in hardware, the issue is that the margin is so small that uh, that you really need to have a strong differentiator and, and you can have competition popping up uh, quite uh, quite fast as well. I mean, it's, uh, I still, I'm saying this, but I, I invested in Tixit, which is how the company is. <laughs> uh. That's, uh, it, it felt like this was a more towards the B2B, but not 100%. Yeah. Uh, 100% yeah, it's, uh, more, it's more towards B2B, but I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's what we see mostly also at Venture Lab is, is companies in the hardware uh, to be more directed to towards B2B, um, easier to to enter, uh, mm. uh, I have the impression. So thanks a lot, Nicola. We're going to move on uh, now to our next uh, pitcher, Adriano Garona. But thanks, uh, Nicola, for that great presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you stay with us uh, for yep. the rest of the of the pitch, uh, or oh, we have a little inception here. But Adriano, is that uh, you sharing your screen? Uh, no, I'm not. I will start now. Okay. Maybe I can ask uh, Nicola if you if you click again on on the sharing, that should stop. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Welcome, Adriano, and thanks also for being with us today. Uh, you are the CTO, so Chief Technology Officer of Ebamed. Uh, we are now more uh, towards MedTech uh, company, and you're going to tell us more, of course, about um, about this complicated, difficult uh, topic you entered. But we're, of course, going to focus mainly today on, on, on how you managed to build that uh, that empire with, uh, with your co-founders. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you the word, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Julia. Um, very nice to be here. Do you see my screen? Yes. Perfect, perfect. So I, I very much enjoyed the, the presentation by Nicola. I think it's an amazing um, experience he had. And uh, I don't know what I can really contribute more, but I try to give my, my two cents of what was my, my story and my experience. Um, and I hope it can be useful for you. Just two words on my background. So I'm a physicist by training. I did my studies here at DPFL uh, in Lausanne. Um, also the PhD, um, which was in collaboration with CERN and with a clinical institution in near Zurich on the topic of uh, technology behind proton therapy. So very precise form of uh, 
uh, treatment for cancers. Um, then I continued with a postdoc also at, uh, at CERN um, in the same area and then worked for three years in a, in a company, in a medical center in Austria that was building up uh, the facility, so right at the stage where um, basically I was leading the commissioning team to check the equipment was working as intended for patient treatment and in the transition between, a, uh, let's say, setting up all the processes that are needed for a medical device company. So very intense and very um, fruitful experience. Then I came back to to CERN, uh, working on um, uh, still in R&D, um, uh, coordinating a team of engineers, and then gradually uh, became involved in uh, in Ebamed, and uh, uh, then I was uh, co-founder and CEO for uh, up to uh, beginning of the year this year, and now I'm CEO of the company. So just a few words on on Ebamed. Um, so our mission is really to um, uh, let's say, uh, to help clinicians uh, improve the life of cardiac patients by offering um, a safe and precise method uh, to treat uh, heart arrhythmias in a non-invasive way. Um, so there's a small revolution ongoing in the field of uh, a treatment of heart arrhythmias, um, which is uh, today treated using catheters, using surgeries, and, um, and there's uh, the potential to treat these patients uh, using uh, non-invasive approaches using radiation. So we're developing a medical device based on ultrasound to monitor the heart position and uh, enable these treatments to be um, safe and effective. Now, uh, what was the story? This started all the, all the way back to uh, 2017 um, with a, I would say, very, very random um, meeting between, uh, my presence were very random, random let's say, between uh, an established cardiologist, uh, a serial entrepreneur, uh, a physicist who was my, my professor, my uh, supervisor, and myself. Um, and then basically the discussion was about animal testing uh, with this new kind of uh, uh, way to treat arrhythmias and the consensus that, uh, let's say, the data was ripe enough such that uh, this could go into the clinic. Um, and this definitely sparked, uh, I say, a, a lamp in my brain. I became really enthusiastic about this. Um, then we spent quite a what was a, a long phase of six months um, that I would call a go no go phase, where uh, I was leading the efforts to identify, um, basically quantify better, understand better the clinical needs, look at uh, look at IP protection, look at technical feasibility, assessing. Um, uh, the business viability. So all in all, it was really to try to see are there any sh big showstoppers uh, along the route uh, that we have to take into account and does it make sense to go ahead? Um, so obviously the, the answer was yes, because the things continued. Um, however, it took quite a long time uh, from, um, let's say, from, from this uh, still uh, nurturing phase to really creating the company. Um, and uh, that in, during that time, that was were followed by uh, an incubator, uh, Fongit, here in, in Geneva. Um, and uh, we were able to establish partnership with a clinical institution um, to develop uh, a revenue model to make the first financial planning, uh, understanding of the market and, and, and of pricing strategies. Uh, we also um, established the first roadmap so how to enter the market. Um, so in the medical device field, you know, it's it's a long process and you have to take into account a lot of regulations and a lot of uh, work related to providing clinical data to prove that your product is safe and effective. Um, obviously, another aspect was technology scouting. Um, we did a lot of work in terms of our awareness and first fundraising, and so I can share my experience uh, more precisely on that. I think it's the topic of today. Um, then obviously uh, we had to create the whole the whole team and find the right resources, and that led finally to the incorporation of the company. Um, so let me see, something is covering the screen. Yeah, so I tried to look uh, think again of what what's all the initial support that we that we received, and and I mean it was it was uh, tremendous, and I'm really grateful for it. Um, it wouldn't have been possible without you know the the, the whole ecosystem being um, supporting us. Um, in, in the in the course, and so this meant industry courses. So I'm, I come from a technical background, so with no commercial experience, so that, that would give me a, some basics of of business and how to uh, run a, run a company. Um, then obviously we were incubated by by Fonshit, uh, who helped us a lot. Um, the network was crucial, and this was a um, network. I mean, of entrepreneurs, of experts in the field, of uh, uh, people from the large medical device companies, 
um, and uh, and you name it. And this came through the network here, the campus biotech, where we we started and we we're still here. We changed offices as the team grew, but we're still in the same building. Um, the venture leaders program, I think, was very good in that, um, and uh, the people that I met there, the other entrepreneurs much more clever, much more experienced than I am, um, then I'm still in contact with them and, uh, and we exchange uh, advice and, uh, and good practice. Uh, friends, obviously, were, were, were crucial. Um, and then in the courses, I, I also was, was a good background for establishing a network. Um, that, that's really crucial. Then coaching, obviously, this was through the EU grants that we received through you know, Swiss, but uh, only later, um, only, only recently. And then the IMD program, I think, was really good in that in that aspect. And then last but not least, um, we, we, we took advantage and were quite, quite successful in that, in all the um, support programs in terms of grants, prizes, and finally equity. So I'll concentrate my comments on the First two points, so the grants and prizes, because I think that was more the focus of, of today. Uh, but if there's questions, we can also I can also share my my small lessons learned from from the equity um, investment side. Let me see. Okay, so um, in more uh, in more detail or more precisely, what what kind of experience did, did I have or did Atebama did we have on this? So. In terms of grants, we were able to um, to win the, the the venture competition, uh, the Master Challenge Switzerland won second prize, um, the EU SME Instrument Phase One, uh, and uh, and Venture Kick. So this was non-dilutive grant and uh, for Venture Kick uh, convertible loan. So it transforms into equity when you create the company and raise sufficient funds. You also raise funds also raise funds obviously at, at the creation of the company. We had a first investment round. Um, which was in 2018, um, which was half from existing shareholders, half from uh, from new ones, mostly business angels, family offices, and then we received the European grant last year uh, for for um, 2.4 million non-dilutive and also um, a convertible uh, an equity component that will come uh, this year in the next years, um, and then we are the next big step is uh, is a Series A uh, next year with venture capital funds. So really. Um, experienced professionals in in medtech uh, investment. So, what were my my lessons learned? Uh, I have a few just bullet points, and uh, I hope this triggers some uh, some interesting uh, questions from your side. So, and again, I think it's not uh, let's say this was my uh, what, what I learned from it. It doesn't mean that it's uh, it's right or wrong or applies to your case, but um, yeah. So first of all, I think it's a it's a long process. So um, uh, so you have to manage the cash flow and manage uh, your expectation also um, in terms of that. And that's I think that that that's the case for grants, but also for for equity. Um, do your do your own work in the sense that uh, you know there's uh, various structures out there that help you to build all the uh, background information that investors and jury members will need. Uh, and this is you know roughly quite very very standard in terms of business, finance, uh, IP uh, risks, and also understand exactly what the other expectations uh, of the of the parties. And I think um, bouncing back on what Nicola said, uh, what kind of uh, what's the, their interest in terms of investment? Is it the right investor at my stage? Is this the right program for my kind of business? Um, and then also uh, choose well where, where you get your funds and, and always try to uh, go for what is so-called smart money, so where you not only get funding but also um, help to uh, enlarge your network, have expert advice, um, uh, establish contacts with industry, uh, raise awareness for what you're doing. I think this is, this is crucial. And then more specifically for prizes and grants, I think, um, so I shared a comment from Nicola, there are amazing uh, programs out there. I mentioned the ones that we use. I think there's uh, there's others out there. Um, so do take advantage of this. Uh, this is quite unique in this uh, uh, in Switzerland and it's, uh, it's um, uh, blessed support at an early stage of, of a company or a project. Um, it's quite time consuming, so I think also maybe uh, uh, my lessons learned is do not undervalue your time. So it's also an investment that you're doing in terms of your time, and you have to see if it's uh, if it's worth. 
um, for and the last two points are more related to EU grants that um, it might be beneficial to, to work with consultants as um, they know well how to structure such proposals and also that it's no free lunch so there is an overhead related to reporting um, of the cost so um, but I think it's uh, that doesn't uh, cut the fact that it's an amazing opportunity but just that you're aware of it and I think uh, so I, I tried to be sure to just to spark uh, more questions uh, and I can also share some uh, lessons learned from the equity comp um, the, sorry the equity round we did but uh, I think I would like to open uh, now for discussion let me just put the screen that's uh, that's very nice of you, Adriana. Thanks for sharing this this advice and uh, and and this journey. I think both uh, you and Nicola, it's you have uh, had the the intelligence to take all the opportunities there is in in the ecosystem. And uh, I think the topic of VC investors is quite broad, and maybe we won't enter that too much today. But uh, more in terms of your strategy, uh, and again trying to put yourself in the shoes of some young students that have startup ideas, that have maybe friends that are that want to do it with them. Um, what would be your advice in terms of when to apply to certain programs? And also, as I see, there is a question from Marie. Uh, which I think is good is, is actually uh, there are a lot of different programs, but which one were the game changers? So which of these programs really helped you? And was it the European? And of course, yeah, feel free to, to answer answer freely, of course. Yeah, so I mean, I, I would say, I mean, we're very lucky to have had the opportunity to work with many of these support organizations and, and I won a lot of prizes. I think um, I, I would for sure, they were all critical. Uh, for sure, I think uh, uh, particularly for sure appreciate. It depends what you're looking for, but uh, let's say um, the Venture Kick I think was a was a really great program. Um, uh, Mass Challenge was also a great program. Venture as well. So it really, you know, for example, um, just very concretely, for Venture, I was uh, for me it was very pragmatic as I as I wanted to be the business plan uh, at this stage of of the project. Just to you know, formalize all we learned, and also see if there were loopholes, and there are there are many. But I mean, if we miss big big things in our thinking about the project, and um, and I saw by chance that you know the the how do you say the what was requested was a business plan at this stage. So I think uh, I very naively in a way I thought, okay, actually it gives me a nice deadline uh, that that pushes me to finish something by by a given date, and so uh, and so that was you know. Perfect, because uh, it gave me the right push, and uh, with let's say, gave me access to coaches for for uh, having uh, as good as as possible business plan. So, you know, it was in line with what we we're at. same for Venture Kick. You know, the format was very linked to. I know we had to go to further investments later, so I think it's a really good exercise, uh, to say the least. For what will be pitches later for to investors, and the questions are the same. And actually, you know, the the, the crowd, the juries are are investors. So in that sense, is a really good way to for you to train and understand, um, uh, get feedback on your project and understand how you need to raise funds uh, later. Yeah, that's um, to say that the the jury members usually are investors, and they are. But they, are, they know they cannot expect uh, entrepreneurs that are come fully ready for that. So they are maybe more uh, nice in their comments or in their in more understanding. And uh, I've heard they can be tough. So I'm not saying that they, they are nice all the time. But that's a question. Oh. You, did you have the impression that you had more room for uh, experimenting within those programs than if you were to go to VC investors? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, uh, of course, the bar, they know that. Um, that, that you're very early stage, that there's a lot of risks there. Um, and I think what's, what's important, I think, is that you understand um, that you understand the journey and understand your limits as well. Uh, so I think, I don't know, uh, the, 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 let's say an example is the fact of the team. There's no way that you can have a full team at early stage uh, of the company. But then you have to, let's say, um, what's important is that you understand what the limitations of, of your team are and what need to do to address and what key competencies you're going to acquire when in the journey. Um, that's an excellent EU point. grants are amazing. I mean, so I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It really depends on what. Maybe if you know, if you really are, are focused on um, 
on, on running your bootstrapping and, uh, and, and really, let's say, um, getting to, to, sorry, to selling fast if you can, if you're in an industry that where you can do that, mm -hmm. then, you know, then maybe another program where you get more contacts and, and more help in, in, that, uh, in that aspect is better. So it, I think it, it really depends. It's hard to give a, a straight answer. I understand. Uh, I see that there are questions also in the Q&A, um, and I think that might have been related to, uh, to Nicola's presentation as well. So Nicola, uh, feel free to jump in. I would love to have both uh, answers here. So what would be your advice or strategies when your startup is acquired by a big company? Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's not like acquired like this. Huh? It's taking a months and months and months. So I mean, there's a, the entire plan for the company acquiring is just acquiring also the team. So there's also they have something very clear in, in in the head to take over the team to make them feel happy that the progress. I mean, the the vision is there. I mean, we know when we were acquired, we know exactly because also we had milestone, <laughs> um, let's say acquisition milestone, payment milestone over the next three years. So that we discussed for weeks and weeks and weeks to fine tune exactly the exact word, making sure we get the milestone, but you know, we get where the acquire company wants us to be. And so that's so that everybody on the same boat toward the same direction. And so it's really, it's really a discussion. I mean, what will be the position of the team? What will be, you know, the, 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 the budget, so what will be the milestone, the goal, are we all happy about it? It's not just, just buy it and, and, and leave it uh, by far. Thanks, um, Nicola. I think we've slowly covered most of the of the questions. I had one still um, also for, for, for Nicola, actually, when also about the acquiring. Uh, as soon as you get acquired, you said that the team was acquired as well, maybe for everyone mm -hmm. to understand. So that works in terms of everybody joins or part of the team so is that also maybe a difficult moment because is it just the founders that are acquired by intel or is that still the end of of a company no, so it, it, uh, i mean you know, we are really engineering company mainly so the entire team uh, uh join uh in, including the person in charge of finance so really the entire team join um but not the sales agent we had sales agents and we are not doing sales anymore so they, 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 they didn't join and on top of it, I mean, the, as part of the acquisition budget, they had a budget to, to motivate the team as well. Motivate in terms of bonus, huh? to be clear. Uh, motivate the team to, 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 to remain and remain motivated uh, as part of the acquisition. So it was a, I mean, a significant budget. So the team was really happy to, to, to stay with Intel. First for the projects and for going for, in our case, from prototype to full production of consumer products, but also for, for financial aspect. Perfect, thank you. Um, I think you were two excellent examples of how it can really go from uh, being at the university at UBFL, having an idea, having support from the lab, to getting the grants, getting money, getting funding from outside, and now being uh, uh, leading some of the successful startups here in, uh, in Région Lémanique. I wanted to say Lausanne, but uh, Adriano, you did APFL, but it's true, you're based in Geneva now. Uh, but that is good. We need to share our, our startups uh, as well um, around there. And um, so I'm just going to ask a couple of questions to our uh, attendees. We have a few people here. And this is a trial because I'm not used to that. Uh, so I'm just curious um, about a few things. And let's see if I can um, ask you if you are interested in particular part of um, of uh, the few programs that we presented today. So probably you have the option now, if I manage to do that right, <laughs> you should have the option between um, being interested in First Ventures, which is a program for uh, students of the applied um, uh, applied school and uh, of applied school of applied science, sorry. And if you are interested in venture kick, of course, this will give us uh, the opportunity to let you know whenever there's the possibility for you to apply and also give you some advice on when to apply. Um, so it's great if you can give us that feedback. Uh, and Inno Booster is, of course, this extra money you get once you uh, join venture kick. So I'm leaving the poll open. It's I just see a green light, so I'm going to trust the system that the, the poll is um, working and asking everybody 
to give me uh, a quick feedback. It's also good for us because if we see that only one of our program is um, interesting uh, you guys, that means that we should put more uh, effort on that one or work maybe on the other to make them more attractive. Um, but that was just the uh, small moment where I, where I needed uh, your opinion, uh, all the attendees here. We are reaching the, the end slowly of this um, presentation. Uh, if there are any last advice or something, you know, that can be also unrelated to the topic that we had today, uh, Adriano or Nicola, if you have um, something that if you were back in your shoes of uh, master students at the PFL uh, with probably eight, nine ideas of startups you'd like to launch, but you don't know where to go or what to do. If you have one last advice for them, I think it's the right moment to share. Maybe, uh, Nicola, you want to start? You need to go to see Venture Lab first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, more seriously, Nicola, I'm sure you have more to say. <laughs> no, no, really. It's, I mean, to you, to the, all the entrepreneur training, I mean, that's the first stage. I mean, this is where you learn how to, or to, to think about your idea as a whole. Huh? It's not only to pitch, because pitch is part of it, but we really think about the idea as a whole, like uh, the team, the IP, the technology, the market, etc. It's, it's a learning. I mean, it's nothing. It's, you know, from the, from the sky. Yeah. So you need to, you need to build it to learn it and doing these entrepreneurial courses for typically people most, uh, People coming from the from the technology side or for EPFL, I mean it's not something you learn during your studies. So that that's a learning you need to make. And so yeah, take the course with a venture lab or other course, but take some course. Thanks, Nicola Adriano. Um, yeah, so I, I agree. I think courses from from venture lab from industries are, are a great great way to understand what your in future life could be. And I think um, maybe what was from my side personally the most change of mindset that I need to make from a researcher to, to an entrepreneur is really to embrace the uh, embrace the, the risk, <laughs> so to say. Um, so you you have to understand that it's uh, less structured as a lie. You, you don't know what things how things are going to evolve, but it's also an amazing experience. And there's so many safety nets uh, that, 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 that you have that really, I think there's um, it's worth to, to, to give it a try, as Nicola was, was saying. As long as it's worth the journey, uh, go for it. Thanks, uh, Adriano. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, and uh, thanks to all the attendees who joined us this afternoon. Uh, it's beautiful outside, so uh, and the terrace are now open. So it's a, it's a double mm -hmm. thank you for everyone connected. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and thanks to the Steel for having us in the APFL for collaborating on that event. And uh, an extended thank you to the Foundation Gaber Truff, uh, which is supporting with Millions Innovation in Switzerland and supporting us here uh, to talk to students all over Switzerland. So it's been a pleasure, and uh, we stay in touch. Uh, we leave our emails if there are any questions re regarding um, the programs, and I would be happy to help you if anyone would like to participate in one of those. Thanks again to our two speakers for their brilliant advice and, and good afternoon to everybody. Many thanks. It was a pleasure. Good luck to everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs>